next on the agenda. This is what we're doing today. So today, today we are going to begin the build of the 148 scale F4U-4B. Um, again, another Academy model. This is a 148 scale. So let's open this up and let's take a look. I have opened this already, but I have not really unpackaged anything. Like these nice little things that Academy puts in their boxes. This is already molded in the nice dark blue that this plane is supposed to be. So no painting required, right? <laughs> Maybe if I was a kid, yeah, but nowadays we know better than that. Models need to be painted even when they're already molded in the color they're supposed to be. Because, well, more often than not, the color they're molded is not exactly the color that they should be. But we've got the clear canopy colors colors, the clear canopy pieces here, fuselage, and I don't know if that's a bomb or a fuel tank, so we've got a cockpit here, that's either, that could be the back headrest in the cockpit, the other side of the fuselage, instrument cluster, prop, looks like the rear landing gear there. Next bag, the next bag, the tail fins, elevators, looks like the engine, front landing gear wheels. There's definitely the bomb, so that's got to be a fuel tank on that. Bombs and I want to call them missiles, but they're probably rockets. Back in uh, 1941 or 42, whenever this plane was built, didn't have missiles, so these are probably rockets. What have we got here? How do you use snips, tweezers, and scissors? We've got our decals here. See, they haven't even bothered with the blue circle around the navy decals because this thing's already <laughs> dark blue. That's pretty funny. As you, you can see it on the box, there's no circle around that star at all. Right? So this, they call this one the, from the Korean War. So I don't know if this was specific to that the plane from the Korean War or not. We've got our uh, instructions on um, uh, before starting assembly, make sure you have all the pieces, and blah, blah, blah. And then we have our manual. So let's put the, all this back in the box. I'm not really going to get to doing much of anything on this today. I'm going to assume they want me to start with a cockpit because they usually do in airplanes. Let's see here. So this looks like um, just where I'm supposed to put the decals. We've got a, a color chart. It's kind of funny, you know, Academy is a, a Korean company. Um, and they have English, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. Why don't they have any of it in Korean? They got all these little pamphlets in here written in Korean. But, holy crap, there's only two pages. <laughs> wow, real complex. And, of course, they want the assembly of the engine and the cockpit first. But I've got some spray paint I need to do because I'm going to make this plane look really weathered. And how 
I'm going to do that, I'll just show you as an example on the wings, on the main wing here. So, it's basically going to sit like that. Um, the front edge of this wing is going to have a lot of chipping going on from just flying, having salt water on it because these were Navy planes. Um, so, a lot of chipping of the paint going along on the on the leading edge of the wings. Um, along the wings here where the pilot would climb out and step on the wings, there's going to be a lot of paint being chipped away on that and worn away from them stepping on it. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast, of the way they got out in and out of these planes. Um, so there's going to have a bunch of paint chipping off of there. Um, this thing's old. This thing was sitting on an aircraft carrier, had a lot of salt water eating away at the paint constantly. And so these things don't look pretty. They don't look new very long. And so I'm going to be utilizing that. I'm going to attempt to make this probably one of the most worn out planes that I've ever built. That's my plan. Um, I know on the pictures on the box, the thing looks pretty good. Like, the way they've built this model and they've assembled it, it looks nice and clean and fairly new and all of that good stuff. I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go for a very weathered and worn look. That's my plan. So what I need to do first is lay down some silver on here. Silver is going to be the base. So even though they were nice enough to mold this in blue, I need to paint this thing silver. And that's going to be in a lot of areas, especially across the top of the wings. Maybe not so much underneath, but I still might do some. Like, it's got a lot of these little ridges here. There you go, like the angle, the, the glare and the shininess right there. All these little ridges along there. So I might do silver on there and then wear the... And then leave that exposed silver there to, you know, because. Um, yeah, so I'm... I'm probably going to wind up painting a lot of this plane um, in silver first. And then um, I have my blue over here somewhere on my desk. And uh, I'm going to go with that. So that's the plan. That's kind of the plan I have for this now. Um, it doesn't look like it's too complicated of a build. Um, the cockpit has four pieces in it. And the engine assembly is, is three pieces, or really two pieces with a pin sticking out. And then you put the fuselage together just like that, it's done. Um, if they want me to paint the interior flat black with a chromate green seat. Chromate green is that, I'm going to assume is that kind of a really a mix of yellowy green that I see a lot of in um, World War II planes um, that they do for like the interior of the cockpit, the inner the, the inner walls, and like the inside of the uh, landing gear bays and stuff like that. They have that weird kind of yellowy green color that they they used back then. Of course, modern aircraft that's all white. But, to whatever reason, when they painted, built this model on, on the box art here, um, you can see here, I mean, where are we? Or they've, it's almost an orangey brown color they used. That's supposed to be the chromate green, right? Shut up, ambulance, or fire engine, or whatever that was. Um, so, yeah, I've got to do that. I've got to paint a lot of silver on this thing and then it can then get started on the actual assembly. So I need to paint it silver and then paint it blue and then wear off the blue, expose the silver underneath, all that kind of stuff. I see guys using different chipping effects online in using things like wax or grease um, and stuff like that 
they lay down these little spots of all this stuff and then they paint over it and they wind up chipping it off to chip the paint away. Um, I don't really do that. I don't see much point in doing that. I always wonder, I think to myself, okay, so they've put some, they've put that stuff on in, say, right here. And now they've spray painted over it and they've chipped off what they want. Well, it, what about the rest of it that's still on there that they've decided to leave alone and not completely chip away? How well is that paint sticking still? That could chip away at any moment when they don't want it to, right? So, I don't know if I trust that particular method. Um, it's kind of similar to like if I took, I don't know, freaking Vaseline and dipped a, you know, dip my screwdriver in a jar of Vaseline and put it on there and then spray it, spray paint and then take the Vaseline and go wipe and then the Vaseline's gone and well, so did the paint that was on top of it. I could get the same effect with something like Vaseline. Um, alternatively, I spray down the silver underneath, then I spray blue over top of it, and then I grab, I don't know, sanding sponge, and just kind of slightly sand away at the blue until the silver underneath gets exposed. It's kind of the same, you get the, the same effect. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, any way I do it, it's going to be, I want to have silver underneath. And uh, even if I wanted to add more silvering because, you know, I can always take my silver paint and a brush and kind of dab around a little bit. There's different things I could do. Um, take a little piece of sponge and dip it in the silver and kind of do that and kind of blot around and give the effect of, you know, the blue is not not perfect. It's, there's different techniques and different options you have. Um, and I don't know if actually putting some kind of a product down in between the layers of paint is something I will do. Um, I mean, I've seen the guys do it and I've seen that it works. I don't know if I actually want to go and buy a, a chipping product, you know, to, to get that effect. But anyway, that's the plan. And unfortunately, I can't really get to it today. Um, I have other things that I need to attend to, um, such as updating a laptop, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so that's that. That's that part. Um, as far as everything else, this thing's molded in dark blue. So a lot of stuff. You see, even the, see, it's strange. They want it in in the green. What do they call it? Chromate green. But yet the landing gear, the wheels, they want white. Olive drab bombs. That's typical. And. Uh, the wings on there what time with the rockets they want silver with a gray tip that's not too creative <laughs> yeah so you want chromate green inside the doors and the wells of the landing gears but the actual landing gear itself they want white that's 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 new to me it's okay there's nothing wrong with that and with the rear end landing gear, of course, they want the gear white. And then that's the end of the build. There's not much to it. This was probably not going to, other than all the paint, this isn't going to take me very long to do. Especially with the rockets all being one piece. I don't even have to assemble them. Um, it's just a matter of spray painting. I mean, that's it. 
So the thing that's going to take the longest is the painting on this thing. And that's fine. But you're going to have to leave that for now because I have to get going. So I want to thank you for watching for this, even though this was a short stream. Um, we will get to part two of the F4U build next time. I don't even know if you call this a part one. <laughs> part point five, maybe? Something like that. Yeah, so, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. Follow me on YouTube. I'll put links down below um, for my Twitch and my uh, Instagram. Um, if you want to head on over there and uh, follow me on those, that'd be cool. Um, if not, then screw you. Uh, <laughs> no, not that screw you. That's not nice. Um, but it is what it is. So I'm going to say thanks again. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out. And uh, yeah, we'll get into this once I've got some paint laid down on the wings and the, and the fuselage. Um, and we'll get into the build next time. And until then, we'll see you later, and thanks again.